Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Games From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out a new in-development 3D modeling tool. It's currently free in beta, eventually this will be commercial software, but cheap commercial software. We're talking 20, 25 bucks to buy a license. Right now you can check it out completely free on Windows, Linux, or Mac, and it's called Plasticity. And every time I say that, for some reason the song Toxicity from System of a Down gets stuck in my head. Hey, great song, not going to complain. So here you can see, it's simple environment, straightforward to work with. Now you're going to find the workflow with this guy is probably a bit different than what you are used to using, especially if you've never used a software solid surface modeling tool in the past. But this is great for creating hard surface objects, uh, for uh, prototyping, that kind of stuff. And you can ultimately export your work out to finish it off in whatever game engine or tool you wish. You can export out as an object file when you are done with the, the workings. Now this works around a concept called NURBS. Now NURBS used to be the way modeling was done back in the day. Uh, it stands for non-uniform relational B splines, I believe. It basically is a way of drawing with curves. Now back in the days of the 90s, early 2000s, soft surfaces were were designed and drawn using NURBS. Nowadays, mostly polygons have taken over the world. We now have uh, N-gons, multi-sided polygons that are all fancy and schnazzy, but NURBS still definitely have their place in the world. So let me show you a very simple way to get started. We're gonna go ahead, draw a circle in the world like so. And once it's drawn, we can click OK, and we are committed. Now I can go ahead, I click the middle of this guy, like so, and it will automatically bring up the extrude tool. Now we can move the extrude tool over here, manually that way, or we can do it using this handy widget right here. So you can create shapes that way easily enough. Uh, once you're done, just click OK or right click to commit. Now you're gonna find, again, you use the um, Blender style hotkeys. So you see down here, we've got uh, move, rotate, and scale. Those are standard Blender hotkeys, G, uh, R, and S. And also on top of that, if I hit G, you're gonna notice we also have options over here, uh, additional options that pop up. This pop-up stuff is very, very nice. So you can move relative to pivot points and, and different areas and orientations. Uh, or what I can do is say G and then X, and it confines me to just the X axis. Or I can do G, Y, and it confines me to the Y axis. So again, if you are a Blender regular, you are going to appreciate that. By the way, you'll notice we got the source uh, uh, curve that created our shape and our shape itself. If you want to get rid of something, you can go ahead, click down there. You also notice the delete key was also X, a carryover from Blender as well. So you can create the simple shapes in this model are very simple. If we can go from uh, spline shapes to start with, or we can use a series of uh, polygonal objects like so. So I could create another cylinder here in the world and I could create it this way. And then you'll notice it dynamically snaps based off my orientation. I'll just start that way. Uh, sometimes I find it's easier to actually create something uh, and then uh, change the size after the fact. We're done, okay, we're good to go there. I'm gonna bring this guy into the bounds of our other polygon there. We'll drop it down a little bit like so. And now I'm gonna select uh, the first object, second object, and you'll notice here we've got, uh, again, your, your properties, the modifiers, things you can do are all shown down here at this bottom uh, operator. I'm gonna do a uh, Boolean on this. You can see we got various different options. Uh, Q for union, W for difference, E for intersect. And you see you can easily uh, create shapes as a result and then boom, click and done. So you see how you can uh, create shapes out of uh, other shapes really, really simply and easily. And we also up here, we have a number of different options in terms of selections, edge. Uh, so control point, edge, uh, face, and then object. And then you got controls over here, things like uh, the axis is uh, x-ray mode or not. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of the idea behind it. So if I come here for edge and I select an edge, immediately we get either the fillet or chamfer tool for, for an edge as selected. And then what I can do is using this little control point here, I can move along those sides. So right now, uh, that is a fillet. So I could also switch here to a chamfer. So I hit C and you can notice the different result there. Or I hit F and we get a different result there or D and so on. So you can really quickly start creating these compound shapes as a result. Each time you select a tool, uh, you get a, a different default uh, tool on, by the way, again, okay. So you can fine tune control uh, your, your options down here, or you can use the on-screen manipulators to do so. And again, right click or okay to commit something. So for example, if I grab a face, so I switch here to face mode like so. So face select, grab this guy right here, it immediately goes into the offset face mode. I can ignore out of that. And what I could do instead is like, okay, so I want to extrude. So let's extrude this guy out. Again, we've got on-screen widget, or I can do things this way. So you've got the on-screen controls, or you can manage things uh, manually. So again, I could come up here and grab it that way as well. So you've got uh, basic shapes there. You've got the ability to create shapes using um, spline points and uh, various different spline shapes available down here. We can also do other neat things. Like I can, um, so let's grab this face, right? Oh, 
So again, you got to remember to commit all the time. It's something I forget to do all constantly. So I can grab this face right here and I'm going to do a shift on it. And this is actually going to, by default, draw a curve on this surface. And so you see here it's saying face or here it says edge. I can pick where I want to draw relative to the snapping uh, being done accordingly. So I could do face and then hold down shift. And I'm actually going to draw directly on this surface like so, and it'll cut. So what I've just did is basically, oops, that's not a planar surface. All right, that's not what I want to do. By the way, you could also do an undo. So I'll, I'll do it here on this face, easier to illustrate. So I'll grab this guy, I'll grab polygon, draw it on my face, like so, and boom, I just cut a hole in my surface by drawing that shape off there. And you can, again, anything can be created relative to another surface and that's what those dynamic snaps were doing. So let's say if I came down here and I wanted to create another cylinder. I could create this cylinder and you'll see here, it's creating it relative to this face. So I could draw out and you notice as I'm creating it, it goes in the various different directions. And so I can, I can again, I find it a little finicky, but I could bring it out so we could do it along the Y axis along the XY axis, we could have it do along the normals and so on. And again, you got uh, fine tuned control over there. So if you wanna create surfaces on top of other surfaces, this is a very simple and easy way to do that. So again, if I wanted to create another shape now off of this guy, let me just do a commit. So now I'm gonna come back here to uh, the cylinder tool and I'm going to do it on this cylinder here. So you see, you can create shapes on them or if I do it through the shape, it will do it as a cut. Let's commit that right there. And we just cut a hole through our surface as well. Uh, so it, it, it's a really fast way of doing modeling, but it's going to be quite a bit different from what you probably came from or you've come to expect in the past. And there's going to be some user interface things that are a little bit quirky to you. But for being uh, you know, a 0.5 release, I'm going to show you in a second the release schedule. It, it's amazing how fast this thing is actually updating. Um, so yeah, you're basically your creation tools here, your, your curve based creation tools are available here. Uh, your 3d objects are available here. Your selected objects modifiers are all available down here. Your, your global modifiers, things like move scale and rotate are available over here. You do have control over the uh, axis. Things are snapped on. Um, so the way or the direction things are created upon no problem at all. Here is your scene is broke down into the solids and the curves that make up your scene. Anything by the way, can be hidden at any particular point in time. You do have the ability to do booleans. So like, for example, if I want to take this guy and then this guy and combine them together, I can literally just, let's do a shift select both of them. And then we can boolean them together, uh, however we wish. So that would be a, a union, I believe we want there. Uh, and then okay, and commit. And now we have one solid object. So it's a really cool way of creating uh, models It's a little bit different than the workflow you're probably used to. Uh, but it's, uh, fast, especially for, you know, or um, not organic for like hard surfaces for mechanical things that you want to create in the world, definitely worth checking out. And then when you're done, you like the results, uh, it saves it automatically as you go. Uh, but you can also go ahead and export these objects out. Now, a lot of these file formats you're going to see here are more for uh, CAD side of the equation here, uh, but you can bring your object out as an object. So Wavefront object um, is a very universally supported format in the world of game development. Pretty much every game engine out there supports that. Um, you can bring it into Blender, Max, Maya, uh, Godot, Unreal, Unity, you name it, it'll support it. Uh, so the object is a pretty standard uh, format out there for sure. Now things that you should be aware of though, if you're going to use this as your initial modeler, uh, there is no concept here of textures. I don't believe any UV maps are being created. So you're still going to have to UV map and texture your finished object uh, when you are done. Uh, but definitely want to check out if the workflow speaks to you, you could probably work uh, very fast in a tool like this. So if you want to learn a little bit more, it's semi open source. I, I don't think it's fully open source out there. Uh, it's under the LGPL three license here. Uh, it's actually written using uh, TypeScript for the most part. There's a little bit of C, C++ behind the scenes. I haven't really totally figured it out as of yet. Also, interestingly enough, it's showing uh, LGBL v3 here, but I saw v2 in an article describing it. So I'm not 100% certain on what's going on there. And in terms of the description, it's a 3D modeling software for concept artists. Modeling of plasticity is quick and efficient due to unique gizmos, shortcuts, and thoughtful workflow. The goal of plasticity is to make working with NURBS like working with clay. Uh, it works nice, definitely nice to work with. Uh, this is, again, 
mostly open source. I don't know exactly what that means, what, what isn't open source at this point in time. Um, also, uh, again, when it reaches full maturity at the 1.0 release, they're looking at a $25 price tag. One-time purchase, no no uh, subscription software or anything on the lowest lines. Uh, it is currently in early stages of development, more features to add, bugs to resolve. Uh, they need beta testers. So, hey, this is the call to arm. If you want to check this out, you want to help contribute to its development, they are looking for um, beta testers. So uh, do give Nick a shout out. Um, and again, if you want to check it out, this is the part that's most impressive. Uh, last updated four hours ago, there have been 151 releases. The most recent release was four hours ago. There was a release five hours ago. Uh, yeah, so so we're seeing a very fast series of releases. Uh, so you expect lots and lots of releases. Uh, so you can come on in here. Uh, not always going to have full updates. So this one, again, I, I'm running on Mac OS. So over here, this is the version I used. You're going to see here, you've got uh, Debian packages here. Uh, on top of that, you've also got Windows and Mac OS installs. So, so I guess that's a Debian package there, RPM package here. Uh, and yeah, if you want to go ahead, check it out as Plasticity. It's currently in early beta. Now, if you want to go ahead and start learning it, uh, the developer behind it, at least I think this is the actual developer, uh, Nick Callen, uh, he has a YouTube channel that kind of walks you through uh, the process of, uh, you know, the hotkeys you need to know, the, the, the process of, of using the tool as it currently stands, uh, doing updates as they are added. Um, so you might want to check his YouTube out as well. I will definitely link that in the linked article down below. But ladies and gentlemen, that there is uh, Plasticity. Uh, it's uh, an interesting workflow. Um, you, you, you know, it's definitely not for everybody, but if you're from a hard surface background uh, and you're kind of missing the old NURBS modeling workflow, you're going to find in some ways this is a lot faster than traditional polygonal, polygonal modeling. And if you come from a polygonal modeling background, uh, in other ways, you're going to find this infuriatingly frustrating. It's, it's just a different way of doing things, and you're going to have to ad adapt your brain to the workflow. But you may find yourself really liking the workflow. So we can do some other neat thing. Like I could grab, for example, draw this line in the world across the surface right there, and then... Uh, OK, create it, and then I hit the C key, and I can actually use that as a cut plane, like so. Then I can literally cut an object into uh, multiple different, it, it's a very cool tool once you've learned all of what there is in the workflow that it works with. But again, I will admit, it's a different workflow than what you are used to. Definitely worth checking out. Let me know what you think of Plasticity. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.